<clears throat> Welcome to Valence Developer Diaries number 34. Uh, today we're going to go over some new features added to the form. Um, one is an upload, another is an address lookup, and then also we might touch on a couple other items that were added either with this latest update or in a previous update. So let's just start. <laughs> Okay, so let's start with uh, this customer's thing. We're going to start with just like, we'll look at the upload and then the address. We have a simple app, just a grid of customers. You click on it, it shows a form. Okay. Um, we want to add, let's add an upload to this first. Well, we could do both at the same time. So I'm going to go and open up App Builder. And of course, if anyone has any questions or anything, just, just throw it in the chat. Okay, here's our customers for developer diaries 34, and we'll just go right into the form. You're gonna see um, your fields as normal on the form, but also you'll see two fields at the bottom always that are NAB specific. One is the upload and then the address lookup. The upload is the same type of upload that you could do currently with when you're calling an RPG program and you say you want a prompt for more information and you could choose an upload field. Um, this just makes it so you can put it directly in the form so you don't have to have a form, go to submit, and then show another window to, to upload a, a document, let's say. So here's our form currently, and we'll just add this upload to it. Let me just leave it, the name. You could change it if you want. Um, so if we go back to fine, you see, I'm going to make this full. So, so I'm spanning three columns because this is already number of columns is three. So this one's pretty straightforward, at least for the front end. Um, once I add the address lookup, then we'll go into the app and then we'll talk about the back in RPG program to, to, to pull the, uh, the document. So now let's go to the address lookup. So I'm gonna add the address lookup and we're gonna see right away it's at the bottom. I kind of want this above my address field. So I'm going to resequence this real quick. And then I'm going to just look up span full columns, all three. Okay. So the address lookup is using the Google API, the same. Google API that the maps use. So if you have a Google API key in your balance portal administration settings, this will just it will work just like kind of like the map. But what this does is if I'm going to type something, 1012, I'm picking an address. It's showing me these addresses. Uh, okay. So now right away we see return values logged in the developer tools. So let me just do that. I bring up dev tools. You're seeing what the Google API responded with. It's an object and it says, okay, the address that they selected, these are the properties that are part of this address. So, and these properties could be different based on different countries and how those addresses are formatted. Um, so here you see street number, route, neighborhood, administration level, country, zip, postal code. Okay, so you can easily see these in the council. You can also see them once you've done that, like tested it in the preview here. If you go back to fields and I go, okay, well, when they when they perform an address lookup and they select an address on that list, I want to update this address field with what? Well, here you're gonna see <clears throat> address lookup mappings, okay? If you click on the label, it will bring you to the documentation for Google to see what these possible properties are. Um, and we have some in the list that are predefined in the tags, which I'll show you, but you could add ones that aren't there if you need it. Just, just type in exactly what you're seeing. But if I go and drop down this lookup mappings, you're gonna see, since I did and address lookup in the preview, we're automatically populating what was brought back, just like we kind of threw in the developer tools of the, the browser. So when I click that address, 
administration level, that's the state code, right? We got country, part of the address. I should say address right here, route, street number. So for address, I wanna go, I wanna say, well, it's gonna be the street number and then the route. Okay. So when what I'm saying here is when they select a valid address from the address lookup, automatically take the values from these two items and put it in this field. Okay. So I'm just gonna just do that one and we'll just see what happens. So if I do uh chickering way, then it automatically changed the address here to the address that I selected. Now, no, I didn't map these other fields, which I can do. So if I go to city, let's just do this. I'll go back. Okay. I choose city. There's like, you see neighborhood in this one. Um, like it was locality huh? or city. Yeah. There's a city. And then we want state. This should be a simple. Done. And then zip. Which I think it's just postal code, right? Yep. And then that would be it. So we can test that again. Now you see that the city, the state, the zip, and the address all changed. So that's just taking, using Google Maps to look up an address and then you can map, like if I didn't map any of these fields, it's not really useful at all. I mean, all you're doing is just doing the lookup and nothing happens. But because we can map those fields, we can take the value from that valid address and then populate our fields to that address. So it validates that the, the address is formatted correctly. Um, okay, just get one of my notes. Okay, so that's that's mapping those fields and adding it for the address. So now we, we're done with the adding the upload. We're done with adding the address lookup. <clears throat> I wanna bring one point up that uh import and we did add and it was not in this last update i think it was the previous one input formatting for numeric fields um so we have the sales field and it's input capable if i go to that sales field <clears throat> you're going to see that there's a new input format for desktop only and you can choose a format so this is uh dollars so i can just choose dollars and let's save and what should happen is it automatically formats the input but when i go in there then it, it that, that formatting is removed so it's a visual thing um but some people wanted it for currency and phone numbers so this would show up if the field is numeric and it's editable i'm gonna save this all right, let's go into our app. Now with the upload, <clears throat> we already have a, um, let me go to behaviors. So I had that pop up already originally, right? That one that came up and there's an update button. Right now it's not calling anything. However, now I want to call a backend program that can take that file and do something with it, right? That they're uploading. And in... Our examples, the nav button 03 is an example of showing you up how to upload a file to the IFS. This is the example. Here's the program we're going to call. It's just putting it into a uh, folder on the IFS called DD34. Okay, so it's DD34 form. So I'm going to go back here. Save. Okay. And I should bring up the IFS viewer and make sure that we don't have anything in here. Okay, it's empty right now. I'm going to reload the app. Hopefully, I see our changes. So we see the address lookup. 
we see the upload. I do the address lookup. Change my fields. We see the input formatting. And we have the browse for the upload. So I'm just going to do the browse. Now, this program for the upload, th this program, when I hit update, it's just looking at the file that was sent to us and just putting it on the IFS. So I'm just going to take this, some PDF. And, you know, before I hit submit, I should bring up that if you are adding the upload and you click on the settings, you can add valid extensions like PDF, um, whatever extensions you only want allowed to be uploaded, okay? So when I hit upload, we have this uploaded successfully because I, right here, we set the response after we've taken in that file and we go to the IFS and we hit refresh and we see our PDF. So this is just a way for you to do the upload without, like I said, without having to say, okay, well, on the call of the RPG program, this is how we would have done it normally or prior previously. Um, on this call, we would have had to say, okay, let's prompt for more information and then add an upload field. So they'd hit update on the form, then you get another pop-up asking for a document. So you don't, you don't have to do that anymore. Um, Am I missing anything, Sean, on those? Um, maybe if, if you could just go back to that. I just want to see that that um, RPG program again. Indeed. Um, and if and and just so everybody knows, if if you um, you know, you do have access as well to the variables that were posted on that, or you know, the other input fields on that form um, through here. You know, in, in this case, Johnny's just you know doing the. The part of the upload because that's the new part um but i just want to point out if you were to pull in the additional uh fields here you would you would use they would all be in there as session variables because anytime you're dealing with an upload um we write out all of the other parameters to uh session variables so you'd be using uh, vb utility get uh ses var and then c name cost no or whatever the fields are on your form right. that's all i wanted to point out okay i will say though with the address lookup currently we have an issue with this new feature it's working when a form is in a pop-up but if it's not in a pop-up it's having an issue unless you have a map already in your app we have already have a fix that'll be out in the next update if you want that patch prior to the update just please email support and we'll give it to you um the last the other thing i wanted to add it wasn't in in there but we did add radio fields to the form to transform so i wanted to cover that too since we're kind of in the form going over the form so we have this other app valence uh, apps okay this is a list Showing all of your active app, all of your apps, period, if they're active, last used, if they're nav. And then we have this form where we can change the status to not be active. So active is one and not active is uh, zero. So enabled, disabled. Do the same thing if you're in Valence Portal uh, admin for uh, apps. I just want to, we're going to transform that <clears throat> to a radio field i'm gonna get out of here and let's go to this valence app form so a super simple form just have the name of the app and then this status and or i could change you know you could have had it as a drop down um a checkbox of course this would probably be a checkbox, but just quickly, just to demonstrate the radio button field. So here on the transform, I click on it. You're gonna see now radio. The radio field works pretty much the same way as a combo, right? But you can choose a data source or you could put inline data. For this demo, I'm just gonna do inline data. So I'm gonna say the value, if it's one, it's enabled. And if it's zero, disabled. Okay. 
Now we should see a change. Okay, so now status changed to enabled or disabled. Um, like I said, you could be pulling it from a data source just like you do for your currently do for drop downs, and it would pull that data in, but I just did inline. So if I hit save, reload this app real quick. I'm going to pick this one. See, it's enabled. Enabled. Should see disabled. Disabled. So that's another item that we add. I think it was this this last release, uh, transforming to radio fields, just like uh, you transform to a uh, combo. Am I missing anything on that one, Sean? No, and you know, just pointing out too that I've you you noticed too that we changed the. Um, oh yeah, the UI for the transform to to just be in one column, where before we were we were just taking up way too much space and had every single type laid out in a column. Right. Yeah, much cleaner, easier to read. All right. That's all I had, unless there's any questions. Feel free to jump in the chat. Upload, address, input formatting, radio fields. Yep. Could the radio button value... Oh, basic. someone's asking if, if, if did we allow multiple. Can you select multiple radio buttons? Can you show multiple radio the, buttons? The radio button, can you have... If you had, can you select more than one radio button? No, it's it's it's, no. A, it's a. You can have more than two radio buttons showing for that field, right? It's all based on the the data oh, right. that you have, but you can only select one value. I think I misread the question. Yes, you can absolutely have more than two values, um, but you can only select one value at a time. Yeah, so I I could in essence do uh, this. Enable, disable, not sure. So you can have more than just two. Uh, can the upload file be launched from within a grid? Or would you always go to separate form? Oh, yeah, it's it's definitely only on the form. Yeah, this is definitely just form related. Um, let me see. Do you need a separate address search field for the Google API, or can you use an existing? Yeah, you don't. You don't. So the the address lookup field is just added on every form if you want to use it. So you don't need to. You know, in your data source. Um, you know, create a special field for it. It's just available on every form. Hopefully that, that, that oh, answers. Oh, I think I understand what the question on that one. So yeah, this, like we show your available fields <clears throat> as normal based on that data source. And then these other two fields, nab address lookup and nab upload are just added. So it's not like you have to have a field in your data source to drive to get this nav upload in this list or the address lookup because was that the question i think so yeah okay. so uh let's see you showed the browse function to upload a new file yes how do you treat a form for doing an update from an existing record how to treat a form for doing that. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not entirely sure. Do you mean how would the how would the upload field um, work in terms of when you're updating a record? You know, from an from an existing record. I think that's well. I guess that's what we're doing here, right? These are existing records bringing populating the form for that existing record and then we added this upload field to it at the bottom. oh okay so yeah so i think i think the question is so suppose you uploaded something against number 40 mm -hmm. um you know w is there a way i think to you know maybe to show that there's been an upload against it and then how would you overwrite that and i think the answer would be 
it, it would probably be involved with yeah or 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 even with the um you know you on your data source you might have a uploaded field um uploaded file you know field right. on data the source. name of the file yeah. and then you would populate that in your data source and or you may um you know you right. could do that either through the through the data source or do that through a form helper or you know upon loading the the form you pull the file yep and then when you upload you know you have that information you can override it if if you wanted to or or reload it i guess hope that answered your question uh to clarify could you use address caddr1 as the address lookup instead of having no you cannot no you cannot no be, um and 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 that would you know and that that's an advantage that you don't have, that you that you wouldn't do that because you just have that 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 field available you don't need to put it on your data source it's just available as a helper field in your form that you could choose to use or not right if you well, overrode an existing file field to do that um you know then you'd have to have the trouble of stripping out all the information returned from the api because you know in your caddr1 you only want your address not your whole response from the google api right and also i guess i should state too is you might not want these editable then true right? yeah so yeah. I, I you know the only way to upload update the address is to use the lookup so i know that it's a a valid formatted address right and then they could, you know, then you'd have your update button. Let me just save it. We'll just show that. So, yeah, I want to update that address, but, you know, we know that it was formatted correctly. So then hit the update. They can't modify that. I don't, I don't see any other I don't see any other questions. Anybody else? That's it. Okay. Well. All right. Um, and then uh, I guess, you know, of course, as always, if you have any issues, questions, suggestions, please, you know, visit our form and 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 uh post in our forms. And this will be recorded. This is record being recorded and will be uploaded to our uh, YouTube channel, so you could rewatch it if you want. Or if people haven't seen it, you know, couldn't make it, they can they can watch it later. Um. All right. Well, I think that's it. Unless there's any other questions. Uh. Nope. All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining, and uh, have a good rest of your day. All right. All right, bye everyone.